unit tests for our language, for uh, toString and parse, and uh, those are the inverses of each other, and eval. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, certainly you can go ahead and have sort of naive, um, uh, naive tests here. So if you look at the top of this file t0test.racket, and we'll look at both racket and Java, yeah, this is sort of what we had before. If I go ahead and I'm going to create a scanner out of the string 34, I'm going to parse an expr off the front of it, I'd better get back 34. Um, make sure minus signs work. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, parse actually went ahead. I didn't need, I could give it a string instead of a scanner, and it was supposed to be overloaded, and sure enough, it is. All these tests do pass, so... Uh, check uh, print size. If you give me this particular string here as input and call parse, I should parse and return in this entire very simple tree. Just yeah. And if you give me this thing here, I should go ahead and get a bin op tree that has these three children, and so on. Um, so yeah, that's uh, check expects. You can certainly do that. That's just checking parse though, right? Check and parse and look at our internal thing. And here's a uh, you know, bigger expression should go ahead and give that. That's not that much bigger, but here's an expression that should go ahead and give a make parity with three things, each of which is not just a simple number, has some depth to it. Uh, another make parity or a make bin op, or the make bin op had other make bin ops inside of it. Yeah, so great, we can test parse. Then we want to come along and test eval. <coughs> okay, so. Now I could go ahead and eval give it each of these different parse trees that I had up above, but when I look at, let's look at the most complicated one, this parse tree is verbose and extends across three lines. It's kind of nice just to talk about the string, okay, um, just this as the program. And you know, if I've already verified that parse works, then hey, I'm going to take a little shortcut with my test cases. I'm not going to call it eval on some tree, well I will, but I'm going to write eval of parse of some string. So that way I can still be writing strings. Okay, straightforward. And make sure that, hey, three boy, four evals to 12. It's not that that string evals to 12, and eval isn't called on a string, but eval of parse of that string. And better return 12. So that's testing parse. Um, I need to test my expert a string. And so this one's more interesting, perhaps. Hey, I'm going to use that same trick. I'm not going to put the parse tree here. I'm going to put call parse on a simple string. Oh my goodness. Um, and then it becomes clear, it's really clear what the result should be. Uh, parse and expert of string should be uh, duals of each other, uh, inverses of each other. Mister. Okay, we're going to have a little pause here while we fix some important headphone issues. Okay, fixed three hours later. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and because I'm take, starting with a string, parsing it and giving that result to expert to string, yeah, the result I should get back should be the string I started with, at least up to white space, I guess. Because um, I guess I can see that, yeah, like if I might have some white space like that, I'll still get back this exact string here after I parse from there. Um, okay, so, uh, great, you know, and I can sort of see that, hey, for every single T program I've written, I have an automatic test case, call parse on it, call expert a string on that, I should have the, the program I came back with up to white space. So, yeah, I should go ahead and write a function that does that, so I can eval, um, or I can do my tests of parse, that's sort of like a lot of handwork I need to do for every single test case. But uh, eval and parse together, or sorry, uh, expert a string and parse together, yeah, I have automatic test cases. And then there's certainly just sort of making test cases where I just want to really provide this string here, and for eval, I want to say, yeah, for eval it's going to be 12. So we can go ahead and do that. There's, um, if you look through the notes, there's a thing about automating I have a little bit of code here. I can go ahead and, hey, I can run a test case that, hey, check equal that, given an expression E or a, a program, a string E for an expression, 
parse it and then call export a string, I should check that you get E again. Um, okay, so what are we going to do? So here's the test harness that I've actually provided you, and you're welcome to feed into it. I recommend you do. Um, I went ahead and said, you know, for testing, what do I need? I need three things. Uh, two to three things, depending on how thorough I want to test. Give me the program to test. Uh, give me, tell me what it should evaluate to, what number it should result in. And if I want to provide that intermediate parse tree, I can do checking with that as well. So here are some examples. I made a list called all tests, and it is a list of lists of link three. So here's the first list of link three, here's another list of link three, here's another list of link three, here's another list of link three. Um, actually, I guess lists of length two or three. Here's a couple of lists of length two. Okay. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna process, I'm gonna give this whole list. So each one, each line here is one test case or one information to run several test cases off of. And I'm gonna go ahead and automate. I'm going to take this list here and I'm going to say, hey, for every item in this list, go out, pull the first thing, call parse on that, call eval on that, see if it's equal to the second thing that was in that list you gave me. So that is, I'm going to pull out the first thing, this string highlighted right here, um, high right up there or down there or something. Um, I'm going to take that string, parse it, call eval on that parse tree, and I'd better get back 15. So that rather than having to write check, expect, check, expect, check, expect all the time, I can sort of automate it and sort of say, hey, yeah, I'm going to go and check that for all of these things here. And I even have it set up so if you give me a list of three items, not only will I check that, well, so with a list, if you give me these two items, I can do what I just said, parse that, eval it, make sure it's 15. I can also parse it. Uh, and call expert a string on it and see if I get that same string back. So that's another automated test, like we mentioned. And finally, if you include in the list what the internal representation should be, I can do a test for that explicitly. Hey, parse it, make sure the internal representation really is this struct, this tree that I specify over here. So you can do all your own check expects like we did up above, but you know, I think it's easier just to go ahead and make this list. And if, if you want to read through, you can see what's going on here. I have a couple of uh, functions called my check equal and test eval and test parse inverse of to string. This is the one that takes in a single string t and says, hey, uh, do a my check equal of, you know, oh, that's t is that triple. So take out the first thing of t, parse it, call expert a string, make sure you get back first of t. Although we had said that it was up to white space, right? So actually, I had a, another helper function uh, from the scanner that, yeah, takes a string and turns it into just the list of the individual tokens that a scanner would give. And though, regardless of white space, those lists should be equal. So anyway, um, yeah, so I, I went ahead and automated all those tests. And here's the function test all that takes in a single test case. And what do I do at the very end? I have the following line. Uh, for each test, for each apply this function to each element of this list. All tests with that big long list. So yeah, this is again a, a loop. For each is a little bit like map and fold, uh, except you use it when there's only side effects. Um, gosh, we shouldn't be using side effects for our programs. This file is written in advanced advanced student language. You should not be writing in advanced student language. I did that because I have things that just have side effects. Calling the test case only has a side effect of perhaps reporting an error message, otherwise doing nothing. Um, so anyway, you feel free to look through that file, figure out what it's doing. There's nothing in there that you shouldn't understand. I will put in one nice, uh, make one last thing about this list though that is important, the comma. I'm gonna, let me talk about the comma and then I think we'll be done. Uh, well, no, then I'll talk about the Java test harness. Um, notice, how did I make this list? I actually, I could have said, here's what it sort of should have been, list of a list containing seven, seven, 
That the first seven is the, the, the T program. The second seven is what it should evolve to. The last seven is the equal and parse tree. Uh, hey, this thing here should be three and make paren of three. Oh, and that should all be a list of three things here. And remember, the list itself is an abbreviation for cons, 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 and so on. Um, I could have done that. Uh, but even here, people are saying, oh, list, list, list. Remember that racket is a descendant of scheme, which is a descendant of lisp, standing for list processor. One of the things they baked into the language, for the better or for worse, is a very concise way of writing lists. They go ahead, it turns out that if you go ahead and make the list, three, you say, quote, three, four, five, six. That makes a list with those things in it. And if you say three, four, five, x, Seven, that makes a list that contains three, four, five, the symbol X, tick X, and seven. Think of this tick in front of the list as being distributed over the list. And the nice part is, is it goes all the way down. Three, Z, I. Yeah, that's a perfectly good racket expression there. It's a list containing three, four, five, X, another list, and seven. That sublist contains three, uh, the symbol Z and I. So, yeah, um, but wait, now wait a minute. What if you didn't want the symbol X here? What if you wanted X to be, gosh, I have X as a variable and I want to insert the value of that variable right here. You can use what they call unquote. Actually, I have to use back quote here and then unquote. Comma X, so the comma doesn't re, re, is not separating from the thing before it. The comma precedes the thing it affects. Think of it as the opposite of doing a tick, tick X, quote something into a symbol, comma x unquotes something that would be a symbol since we're in a bigger tick back tick expression. So what's the upshot? Delete all this and leave you with that. The upshot is don't, <laughs> don't ignore these commas. If you put your own thing there and you want to actually evaluate it, uh, put a comma there. If you just want the thing itself, like seven, I just want the number seven, great. I want this literal string here. Here I did not want a list whose first thing was the symbol make up or make bin up, I wanted to actually call make bin up right here. So that's why I preceded it with a comma. So that may or may not make sense. I have a link on the homeworks page to more about quoting and back quote. Um, it's, a, it's a great thing. It's, here's an example right where it shines. Uh, I've made all these different things here. But again, if you make your own things, you'll follow this pattern. It'll look like it. Just remember to proceed. If you have something you want to evaluate, like the call to the parse tree, a constructor, if you include that third item, um, you would want to proceed that with a back quote. If you don't, we, we can try running. Let's uh, try running right now. Let's see if we uh, pass all these test cases. Okay. By the way, my test harness also goes ahead and prints out things and see how many test cases are passing. If there's an error, you can try to track it down a little bit better. Um, let's go, and I'm going to remove this comma here. Okay. Uh, when I remove the comma, this is a list containing a string, the number 12, and then a list another list. That list contains, as its first item, the symbol make bin up. I don't want a symbol there. I want to actually call a constructor. So what would the test case look like if I do this? Uh, it'll probably say, hey, I got a make bin up, and I expected a list with a containing a symbol. Uh, Expert a string. Oh, I called expert a string on that thing to see. Unknown type of expert, a list containing tick, make, bin up, three, boy, and four. So, yeah, um, the upshot, that comma is important to unquote the quoting that's going on, otherwise, of this big, huge, long list of lists of length two and three. So, okay. Uh, that's all I want to say about the racket test harness.